Hey, welcome to Know the Cause. Thank you for being here today and thank you for telling your friends. We've got a great, great show planned for you today. You know, as Christmas, last Christmas, uh, my wife and I had with friends a glass of red wine. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, I don't drink alcohol, but I really, it freed me up. Instead of being the wallflower that sits there and doesn't say much, all of a sudden I felt like talking a little bit. Next day I didn't feel so good, right? The stomach wasn't just right and so forth. Could it have been the alcohol? Alcohol is implicated in many forms of cancer and other diseases. Well, scientists have just linked it to skin problems. And not the alcohol, but alcoholism, right? That's somebody who must drink every day and drink plenty. They can't go two or three days without alcohol. It's kind of like many of us and coffee, right? Only this is alcohol. So break it down. The fungus is penicillium. The poison it makes is called penicillin. Brewer's yeast is the fungus. The poison it makes is called alcohol. So when we're consuming large amounts of mycotoxins or poisons, byproducts of fungus, it should shock no one that we end up with skin problems. And by the way, doctors tell people with onychomycosis, toe fungus, ah, oh, it's just on your toe. See, I think it's throughout your body by the time it gets to your toe. This just proves that people drinking mycotoxins, it isn't just ending up in their stomach, it's filtering. It gets into the bloodstream and it can cause skin problems. I salute them on this study. They're starting to get it, folks. And for me, that's exciting. Welcome aboard. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. If I get asked once a week, it's probably not enough. It's probably more like three times a week. My doctor said I may have gut leakage, gut permeability. Doug, what is that? So let's do a little study on this because I'll tell you folks, it was I had a successful food allergy business. I opened the first lab in the United States in the 1970s that dealt with the disease process as though it were nutritionally linked. And food allergy was one of our big tests, okay? And a paper came across my desk. Here was verbatim, here was what it said, antigenically intact food macromolecules exit the gut lumen. In English, pieces of food that you eat sometimes leak through the intestines. And it floored me because this was a blood test for food allergies. And if foods are leaking through the gut, where are they going? Look at this next paper, eight years later. This is Annal Reviews of Nutrition. There is now irrefutable evidence that small amounts of proteins, foods, peptides, do enter the circulation, that means the blood, under normal circumstances. Normal circumstances is gut leakage normal. Okay, we're drawing blood when we're doing food allergy testing. Are we just measuring foods that people are eating that are leaking through the gut? Why not seal up the gut instead of all the food allergy tests? But I'll tell you, sometimes food allergy tests can be life-saving. Many of you have told me that, and I agree with you. Conditions associated with leaking intestine. Some of the 90 autoimmune diseases, celiac, Crohn's disease, hives, acne, allergies, arthritis, joint problems, and the list goes on and on. The question I have for you is chronic fatigue. Do you have irritable bowel? Do you have some of these conditions? Are you finding that I just can't explain it, Doug? I've been to all the gastroenterologists. I feel horrible. Could you have gut uh, leakage? Could you? Were you breastfed? You know, the early studies say that mother's milk protects the colostrum, protects against gut permeability. Uh, now can you use cow bovine colostrum, et cetera? Can you use other things, psyllium maybe, to seal up a leaky gut? I was reading a daily devotional, Oswald Chambers, the other day, and look what it said because it's so relevant here. The danger lies in observing the effect and believing it's the cause. The danger lies in the lump in the breast and saying, that's breast cancer. How'd I get it? The danger lies in saying, you have gout. How'd I get it? Uric acid. How'd I get the uric acid? You're looking at the end result. You're looking at any one of these diseases, and you're saying, well, you have arthritis. How'd I get it? The danger lies in looking at celiac and saying, well, that's it. Now we got to treat it. Where did it come from? That's what Know the Cause is all about. Here is uh, know the cause of leaking intestines. Here are some of the conditions that go along with it. Stress, 
intestinal infections, medications, antibiotics, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like acetaminophen. Poor diet, mycotoxins in the diet, excess alcohol, environmental contaminants, and then this is helpful. Uh, lactulose mannitol testing can be doctor ordered. It's a six hour urine test. If the levels are high, leaky gut most likely exists, says a study uh, out of a, a medical journal. Folks, this is, we are observing what the leaky gut is doing and saying that's a disease. How'd I get it, doc? We don't know. It's one of the 90 autoimmune. We have no idea, Mr. Kaufman, how you got that. Yeah, we kind of do, folks. Leaky gut, it wasn't a real problem. When I first heard it, I can remember, you know, a couple decades ago, I said, ha, 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 leaky gut. It's a huge problem. How do we get leaky gut? Even stress, antibiotics that you were started on the first week of your life, more than likely. Uh, non steroidal you ever take acetaminophen, Tylenol, et cetera, all those can widen the cellular gaps in the lumen, the lining of the lower intestine. And when that's widened, boy, things leak through. So what you've got to do is figure it out and try and fix it. How do you fix it? I've, I've alluded to that a little bit. One of the things I would do is change. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. If you've got Crohn's disease or any number of diseases, change your diet, number one. Mom, did you breastfeed me? Just curious. Because I saw a guy on TV today that said a lot more intestinal problems in kids who weren't breastfed, right? The colostrum that came out first from mother's milk actually coats the intestine. Can we try bovine colostrum? I'd try bovine colostrum. I mean, that's one way of going. Can we try binding up with psyllium, which binds mycotoxins in the gut? There are many things you can do, but think about this. Change and use naturals whenever you can. Don't go away. Diabetes is epidemic with your immune cells mistakenly attack your own body. In diabetes, your pancreas is the victim with dangerous improper production of insulin and excessive unwanted blood sugar the result. You need blood sugar normalization and improved insulin intake in your cells. Eat a no sugar diet and regularly monitor sugar levels. Take ammunition glucan, requiring no prescriptions to nutritionally help promote proper insulin production in the pancreas. The ammunition glucan also enhances immune cytokines that are out of kilter and not properly performing. For a diabetic retinopathy that attacks your eyes, don't be without the NSC eye care formula loaded with nutritional ingredients beneficial to vision. If you are pre-diabetic or diabetic, daily take NSC 100 Extra Strength Glucan and NSC Ammunition Eye Care Formula. Which of my books fit you? Can you cook your way to wellness? Can you eat your way to wellness? That's the name of a couple of books I've written, Cooking Your Way to Good Health or Eating Your Way to Good Health. Loaded with recipes, whether you want to follow the phase one diet or the phase two diet. Please your families with good tasting foods all put together in these two great recipe books. You know, you look at this and it's just so pretty and so fresh and the cap is still on. It's a bottle of water. It's interesting how many people ask me, and I know a little bit about fungus and the poisons they make, but relatively less about water. You know, Doug, which water do you drink? I drink reverse osmosis water. Uh, many people recommend it. That's why I do. Do I drink tap water? You know, shh, don't tell Ruth. But every once in a while, you know, if I'm taking a supplement or something, I'll drink tap water. Uh, it's relatively clean. We get the report out here in Rockwall, Texas all the time. Let's talk a little bit about the question I get asked most. And that is, what about different pH, acidic or alkaline water? Because I want alkaline water. Let's answer that right now. First, let's talk a little bit about water. These are fascinating facts from Natural News. It's not just your five or so quarts of blood serum that contain water. Your organ cells contain water. Your brain, I didn't know this, and nervous tissue are about 80% water. Severe dehydration leads to mental derangement and even death, okay? Most of us, about 75% of the population, suffer from mild dehydration. And folks, <clears throat> you may be one of these. Uh, this morning I worked out and boy do I get sweating in the warm weather. 
right? And I go in and I drink a cup of water. And maybe I need more. Maybe I need a couple of bottles of water, but I throw a little down, take my shower, and away I go. So I may have this mild dehydration. I might be one of the three or four that have this. Which, if chronic, leads to poor health, aches and pains, low energy, mental fogginess, and even serious types of diseases, okay? So we have to be on board. We have to understand that. Uh, we all need water. Our cells in our body are made of water. Our nervous tissue is made of water. We have a lot of water in us, and yet we don't drink enough water throughout the day. Now, people ask me, how much water should I drink? I don't know. If you're out there working out hard and sweating, and you're a two-hour guy jogging or gal, um, you need a lot of water, right? I drink probably a couple of bottles of water a day, uh, these little bottles of water a day. Um, but each person, I think, is a thumbprint. Here's the important thing. Water pH may affect your pH. Doug, should I be drinking this alkaline water? Fungi are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. They almost invariably alter the pH of mediums they grow in, and you, my friend, are a medium. A common cause of decrease in pH or acidic is the accumulation of what we call organic acids. These are formed as sugars break down, right? So, in the presence of fungi, high intake of sugars might allow you to become very acidic. Right? You get up in the morning, you take your pH, saliva, urine, etc., and you go, wow, it's 5.0, I'm very acidic. Should we drink alkaline pH water and eat an alkaline diet to move our pH to a more alkaline setting? Or should we try and rid our body of yeast and fungi that seems to be altering our pH? My bet is, for a period of time, use the water and alkaline diet. It's really a phase one diet. Use that to help get your pH out of the uh, acid range and then really both, kill the fungus or it's gonna keep coming back, okay? Don't go away, more to come. Hi, I'm Susie Cohen, author of The 24-Hour Pharmacist, and I only recommend Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. You see, most probiotic products contain billions of freeze-dried bacteria, but that can aggravate bloating and gas. Dr. O'Hara's provides only live, beneficial bacteria, plus their prebiotic nutrition. It supports noticeable digestive comfort, I believe in Dr. O'Hara's consistent results. It takes guts to feel great. Which of my books fit you? Are you or a loved one suffering with allergies, arthritis, intestinal problems, or depression? In the Fungus Link One book, the diet is there, the antifungals are there, and so is the information on those disorders. Do you suffer from aching joints, painful arthritis, or soreness? Have simple tasks like writing, getting up, or opening jars become a struggle? Have you tried other joint supplements only to find out they just don't work? If so, Flexin is for you. Flexin has really helped me. Flexin has just made me feel super. Flexin is made in America and features the revolutionary joint health ingredient CM8. With over a million bottles sold, give Flexin a try. Visit tryflexin.com. Do you know what skydiving is? No, not that kind. This is actually an exercise that in two weeks of doing this fixed my producer John's back. He had horrible back pain. He doesn't now. Watch Daniel. Did you know that you can heal yourself of the majority of back pain? Well, I'm going to teach you a few exercises that are going to help you to, to feel young again, to feel vibrant, to feel alive, and to, to eliminate any malaise. But it starts with posture. Shoulder blades low, number one. Shoulder blades together, number two. Buns, holding an imaginary credit card, number three. This is it. This is perfect posture, friends. Side view, front view. The most important exercise you can ever do in the morning is gonna be right here. It's called a skydiver. Onto the floor. Reach with your palms towards your heels. Toes in tight, chin in tight. This is lower back and buns. I know that none of the, the female viewers out there want tighter buns, so you really shouldn't ever do this exercise if you want tighter buns at all. Chin is tight, back of the head to the sky, heels to the sky. If you've ever experienced back pain, you know that it's the worst possible pain ever. So if you were to go ahead and, and, and execute this exercise with perfect, impeccable posture, you will be on the road to recovery and you'll feel like you're 18 again. Thanks for checking us out. Know the cause. 
skydiving. Do a skydiver. Folks, don't look. If your back is really sore, um, do that very slowly first. You know, the gradual raises. It really, really does help certain types of back pain. Now, let's go to the audience. You and the audience have your time now, and I'll answer a couple of questions for you. The first one I thought was especially good. My goal is to keep cancer away forever, says Mary. I had surgery, chemo, and radiation. I will never endure that again, ever. Mary, if I've heard that once, I've heard that a thousand times, and yet here's the problem. People don't reorganize their life. What induced that cancer? What caused it? Was it just some mysterious dust that fell on you? Well, if it's mold, it probably is. What caused the cancer? Doctors don't know, folks. Their goal, and they did it, their goal was to fix it with these poisons. Mary, thank God you're still alive. The, the chemo and radiation did their job. Now what you have to do is never go back again. But it's one thing to say that, it's a whole other thing to build that. John, if we can have the next question, I'll continue with Mary. Tony says this, what causes osteosarcoma and blood infection? My dad had osteosarcoma. He lost a leg and a hip to osteosarcoma. It is actually cancer, uh, bone cancer, and blood infections that ensue. Look, septicemia happens with bacteria, with fungus, etc. But Tony, once again, what causes this? Just like Mary before, look, I had this and I want it gone. Folks, your doctor is there to fix a problem. We're worried about diagnosis, accurate diagnosis today. I told you in previous episodes of Know the Cause about the 27 people who in 2013 were diagnosed with lung cancer and the doctor did the tests and he did the radiographic studies, x-rays. Sure enough, that was lung cancer. And then they did some special biopsies. Why they did this, I'll never know. They should have done it the second they saw a lump, but they don't. They started looking for fungus in all 27 of these, and I'll be darned, all 27 had fungus, all 27 went on antifungals, all 27 were healed of their cancer. So what causes osteogenic sarcoma or osteosarcoma? Look at my dad's lifestyle, folks. I love that man more than you'll ever know. Dad's been dead at least a dozen years. Dad smoked at least a pack of camels a day. Dad loved his beer after work, and he'd go out and get a six-pack or two, and he'd drink that. You look at those two things, folks. Number one, tobacco, according to Dr. Costantini, doesn't cause lung cancer. Tobacco fermented in sugar and rolled tightly and put in a cellophane pack does cause, that fermentation of fungus does cause lung cancer. Number two, the brewer's yeast makes a mycotoxin. Brewer's yeast that makes alcohol makes a poison and it's called alcohol. And so dad, between sucking down the cigarettes and drinking all the beer, and then dad loves sweet rolls and so forth. I'll never forget him, I love him, I'll see him again someday, but at my age, dad was missing a leg, a hip, he had prostate problems, heart problems, the whole list. He lived to be 79 years old. The reason I'm telling you that is that lifestyle leads to cancer. Folks, if you're living in a moldy home, I've published all this. I've published in a medical journal this. I've written books on this, The Germ That Causes Cancer. You can go on our website and order it. Understand that certain lifestyles actually give people, I believe, serious diseases like diabetes and lupus, autoimmune diseases, asthma, et cetera, cancer being one of them. Are you living in a moldy home? 15 bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's, go get a mold test plate, follow directions and see if it grows gray fuzz all over. Not all gray fuzz is pathogenic mold. So have someone look at it after you get this done. You can usually send it to a laboratory. Number two, do you find yourself eating corn like out of a trough, you love corn so much, or corn sweeteners, corn syrups, etc. Number three, same with peanuts. Number four, look at dad, smoking and drinking alcohol. That lifestyle, Tony, can, can uh, put you up to a state where you're very vulnerable to fungal attacks and therefore what I think is being often misdiagnosed as cancer. I told you this before, it bears repeating as I say goodbye to you here on this segment. If you inject a fungal byproduct into laboratory animals, they all get cancer. Really? Because I thought they all got a fungal process disease. No, the doctors changed the name from a mycotoxicosis to cancer. Why? You inject fungus and they get cancer? 
Doesn't that make sense? Fungus might cause cancer. Don't go away, more to come. Barb and Frank Long of Long Life Unlimited are distributors of one of the best home cleaning degreaser products in the country called Orange TKO with Delimony. Also, they feature many products in the Rafa Remedy line. Try this amazing product on your skin today. They also can serve you with 300 other products, many that are featured on Know the Cause. Ask for the Know the Cause special now by calling the number or logging on to longlifeunlimited.com. Remember, it's God given, people approved, and doctor recommended. Which of my books fit you? The first time I wrote this book, I called it What Makes Bread Rise. Many people didn't get it. The same yeast that makes bread rise can make us rise. So is there a fungal link to weight problems in America? Read The Fungus Link to Weight Loss. The diets are there, the prescriptive, the natural antifungals. I think you'll enjoy it, and I think it'll cost you a lot of pounds. You know what I love about Guiltless Foods? Number one, I love the owners, Daniel and Lindsay. I love the name of their company because if you ate all of this, six mini pizza crusts, right? Couple loaves of bread and 20, 10 in each of their tortilla shells, you wouldn't be eating any grain, no sugar, no dairy. It's all made out of seeds. You would be totally guiltless at the end of it. $59 for all you see in front of me, but then you have to ship with dry ice and styrofoam. That's $20 no matter what your zip code, $79, it's a deal. You know what, you're, uh, you're sure lucky you have me as a host. I go back so many years, 45 years or so. About 40 years ago, I attended a medical conference in the 1970s, and I remember them talking about a, something that was a new phenomenon, a, a brain neurotransmitter problem called autism, right? And they were saying that uh, maybe it's fractions in our diet that is causing this, because when these kids change their diet, they seem to get better. And I totally agree with that, but out came a brand new word to me at one of these conferences. It was gluten. Now what the heck is gluten, right? Gluten gliadin, they make up proteins in wheat, barley, and uh, rye, and a few other things. All of a sudden it went away. In the 1970s, poof, the gluten diet is gone. All of a sudden it's back, and I think it benefits a lot of people, I wanna say that. But folks, how does it benefit you, right? You're going in and taking a blood test, and the test is showing anti-gliadin antibodies. That means these wheat proteins leak through the gut. They're in the serum, the blood serum. You make antibodies to them, and you can see anti-gliadin antibodies to it. So you've got gut leakage. Did that precede a diagnosis of gluten sensitivity? And then many doctors are just saying, look, just go on this diet. Go on this gluten-free diet, and you're avoiding wheat. Wheat is commonly, no, I won't say that. Wheat is sometimes impregnated with these mycotoxins. It's kind of a poison that we're eating time after time. So people go off wheat, they feel 100%, and they assume they have a gluten sensitivity. So how does that fit into what we do here, okay? In the phase one philosophy, gluten has nothing to do with the choices, dietary choices we make. We make our choices entirely on the basis of fungi and their poisons called mycotoxins, be they in the foods themselves, or if they contribute to an underlying fungal condition or pathology. So hops and millet are gluten-free, right? Used in making beers, used in porridges in Russia and China. Millets also use a breakfast cereal. Maize, this is interesting because the word corn so rarely comes up. You know, it's kind of shh. But maize, used to make porridge in many countries and as a substitute for wheat to make cornbread and various other baked food, right? It is also used to make the popular cereal cornflakes and as a source of starch, which is a main ingredient in many of the cooking recipes, the gluten-free cooking recipes. Polenta, a dish made from boiled cornmeal, which is popular in many countries. And then we have potato and we have rice. Now, the reason I'm bringing this to your attention, folks, is these are all okay on the gluten-free diet. I've had this hypothesis for decades, and that is when a doctor tells you you're gluten sensitive and you begin eating potato, lots of rice, maybe polenta, lots of corn, lots of sugar, these are all gluten-free, what's gonna happen? For a month, you're gonna think that doctor hung the moon. You've gone off mycotoxin impregnated wheat, and you're gonna say, gosh, I feel like a million bucks. But then, Doc, am I eating way too much corn, way too much potato, I'm gaining weight, way too much sugar? No, don't worry about that, it's only gluten. 
it isn't only gluten. I'm thrilled that you're doing well right now. But as you can see, as you begin loading up with some of these starches and other carbohydrates, uh, like corn, like sugar, you may have problems. I'll never forget many years ago, I did two lectures in Oklahoma City. I was physically drained, physically exhausted, and they had all these people have dinner with me out in Oklahoma City, and they were in three-piece suits with ties and so forth. And Kyle Drew was there, and I was physically drained. I, had my, I ordered a steak uh, and broccoli, and I had my elbows on the table, and, and these businessmen were saying, you know, Doug, this is a poly chain, a carbon chain product that I think would really be excellent for this, this, this. And another one would say, well, this uh, works in tissues deep, and it has uh, carotenoids, and it has all these great things. And Kyle Drew, Kyle Drew said, I looked up from the table, and I said this, bottom line, if it kills fungus or if it starves fungus, I'm all for it, guys. Sometimes we use such highly technical words, even in nutrition, that it just goes right over my head. You can starve fungus by avoiding starches and carbohydrates and grains and things like that, or you can feed it. What's the difference if you list all the gluten-sensitive symptoms and all the mycotoxin-eating symptoms? Folks, if you put them together, they fit like a hand in a glove. Look, I don't care whether you're gluten-sensitive or if you've got a mycotoxin problem. I'm thrilled that you're now off wheat and you feel you have a gluten-sensitivity problem. It may be a bit deeper, and you're going to know in a couple of months. Don't go away. More to come. What I'm about to tell you is huge if you're a headache sufferer. When yeast from your diet, like from bread and carbs and pasta, breaks down, it forms a poison in your body called acetylaldehyde. This is a potent neurotoxin. It's known to cause a drunk feeling, a hangover, and a headache. You can starve the yeast by going on Doug's phase one diet. This is important for any kind of headache syndrome. For more on headaches, visit my website, I've got a brand new book on this topic with lots of helpful tips. Fascinating, isn't it? We learn something new every day. And folks, my background the past 40, 44 years, this is what I've done. Thank you for enjoying the show. Thank you doubly for telling your friends about Know the Cause. I'm on every day at this time. Um, and it makes all the difference in the world when you know what you have prior to walking into a doctor's office. I know I have high blood pressure. I know I have high cholesterol. I know I have shoulder pain. Why do I have it? So you can trace it back to eating patterns, smoking patterns, drinking patterns, medication patterns. Finally, you may have a fungal issue if you've traveled to less developed countries, have you ever been treated for worms or parasites? So my producer's brother, Scott, uh, goes to Haiti. He comes back, and I mean, this guy's sick. We talked with him on the phone. He's very, very sick. And so I told John, that's an easy one, uh, get on some anti-parasitic medication. Remember, fungi parasitize man also, just like pinworms and all these other worms. Nobody would even test him or treat him. It was a stool test, they can usually determine that. Finally, a physician's assistant gave him the anti-parasite medicine and in one day, he was fine. What don't our doctors know? That's what scares me. What do they know? I'm proud of that. Finally, have you ever been treated for ADD, ADHD? Are you being treated for it now? Even neurological symptoms. Remember, some of these fungi make poisons, penicillin is one, called a neurotoxin. And those neurotoxins can really get you, okay? Great show, thank you for coming aboard. I'll see you next time, bye-bye.